Alright. Let me just up here. Alright, so I was just curious, like, your studies seem really interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm, thank you guys a lot for getting back to me. You're welcome. Um, I appreciate your time. Sure. Um, I guess, like, my first question is just what guided you to this, like, specific field of study individually? Okay. Um, well, I, I started in, at Wayne State about 12 years ago. And when I first came here, there was um, a program going on with the Alzheimer's Association, and it had to do with family caregiver training. So um, they needed trainers, and it was to train caregivers on how to bathe, groom, dress, feed, communicate, um, transfer, and toilet their care recipients. So I volunteered to do that, and along the process, they were collecting pre and post test data and I asked them what they were doing with it, and they said, well, we got a grant, and someone's gonna write it up one day, but, and, and they didn't really have anyone, so I volunteered to help write that up for them, so I looked at it, and it was kind of like pilot data for a bigger study, so my main focus is caregiver training, so I've taken that, and um, together we wrote up a feasibility study on how this family caregiver training program effectively teaches caregivers how to perform these basic activities of daily living is what we call them ADLs okay so um, so then I took that and I just defended my dissertation in August on a you know random control trial on how to how, how does this work with a control group if they just get standard care information versus this program and um, I haven't published those results yet. It's under copy editing right now, <laughs> but, but um, but the results were the same. It was yeah. it increased knowledge for the intervention group, and um, um, we looked at burden, depression, and quality of life, and occupational performance and satisfaction. So confidence actually went up for both groups, but then didn't three months later, and. Um, and a lot of that is just interacting with people. So the control group re received an intervention because I was there, and I, even though I didn't give them that family caregiver training in information, I still gave them attention, and I answered yeah. their questions. And, and the information I gave them, which is supposed to be standard care, was brand new to them. So it's okay. a packet that the Alzheimer's Association gives um, physicians hand out to people who receive a dementia diagnosis well they're either not handing them out or they're not reading them because you know you get them and it's like these black and white you know pieces of paper and you might just file it away or for whatever reason the information was brand new to them and all it does is tell you the different types of dementia what to expect um, but it doesn't really tell you what to do and then there's you know places you can go for help and resources so so that was an, a really interesting finding because even though like a, a true statistician would say, well, you can't say that there was increased confidence because it happened with the control group too, it's actually a pretty interesting phenomenon that it did improve for the control group too. Yeah. So anyways, I got off target because I was supposed no, to tell you just how I got involved, but that was That's how perfect. I got involved yeah. in, in uh, Alzheimer's and, and uh, dementia. And then quality of life came along because I started working with Preeti and that's really her topic. So, so if you're wondering yeah. what we're ranting about, we <laughs> both are occupational therapists and as occupational therapists what we are concerned about is the individual, like how do they live life to the fullest for whatever reason. You know, right. They may have a childhood disability or dementia or anything in between. So as long when your life you know, when you have a sure chronic disability, chronic illness or a disability, you're unable to perform your daily activities like feeding, dressing, bathing, grooming. So as OTs, that's what we focus on, your basic activities of daily living and the higher order ones like shopping, marketing. So how to live your life roles, that's what we're concerned about. Okay. So I guess my interest in families came in because as you notice, our research is about caregivers. Yeah. You know, as a young OT student and as an early therapist, I, I figured out that our therapy is only as effective as how much we've communicated to the family members because we are there for short periods in their life. Like if we work in an acute care hospital, we see them for two, th two or three days versus mm -hmm. if we're in a 
nursing home or somewhere else, like a rehab facility, we may see them for longer time periods, but still the therapist is in and out. And then it's, it's almost like the way our therapy is only as effective as how much we've trained them to become yeah. like therapists for life. Okay. Depending on the condition, so that's what, so. I guess what's common is for me, I focused on young families. I mean, young children with disabilities. So I started with the younger population. How mm -hmm. do parents live, deal with this lifelong? You know, when you have a child okay. with autism, you're caregiving for the rest of your life. And then I met Roseanne, who was doing this research with dementia. So we're like, okay, we have commonalities. Mm -hmm. And so that online study that you're seeing now. It's sort of now we're trying to combine we don't care what the disability is if you are a caregiver we want to know what are the challenges that your family faces so that's kind of how we came together okay <laughs> I was curious um, like your in the abstract mm -hmm. it says that uh, well first of all I didn't really understand that you said uh, service mm -hmm. professionals noted family level dynamics as possible hindering care so which abstract are you referring to? Sorry. It was. Yeah, sure. Pardon me. Yeah, I was trying. She was asking me, and I said I wasn't sure. Because we have a few papers, I'm just wondering yeah. which one. Yeah. Um. You know, actually, I'm not sure exactly. That's which okay. One What's it? Do you know where did did you get it from? Like a paper that yeah. was online? Yeah. Yeah. I found it. It was like on your Wayne State like faculty page. There was a link to it. It was one. I think of it the sounds like that paper. Okay. Go ahead. Read the sentence. Um, you said service professionals noted family level dynamics as a possible hindrance to like care. Oh, so mm -hmm. that came from a focus group study. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so that was um, the Michigan Family Review yeah, one. Yeah, the Michigan okay. Family Review one. So uh, another study that we did was we looked at early stage, middle stage, late stage caregivers actually early stage caregivers and care recipients. Early stage of dementia. Of okay. dementia. Mm -hmm. Middle stage dementia caregivers, late stage dementia caregivers, and service professionals that deal with families and people with dementia. Mm -hmm. And we had a focus group for each group, and we basically wanted to know what, what do you need. So for the early stage group, we had a few care recipients who had dementia. Um, it can get kind of tricky because, you know, sometimes it's just a difficult dynamic you're talking about their diagnosis they they typically in early stage just received it and and now you're in a focus group and we're asking you what do you need so yeah they they discussed you know what they needed um, and how do you access information and what's important to you what do you wish you had what do you wish you would know um, that you don't know things like that and so for the early stage for the most part I'm trying to remember now um, for the early stage, it's just getting like, a, and for the middle stage and late stage, it was like a one-stop shop. Like there's all these resources online, there's all these places you can go, but what's credible and what's not, and what do you really need like to get by every day? Okay. Um, so that quote um, about the service professionals, those case managers, um, people at different agencies, maybe the Alzheimer's area agency on aging, those are just a few around the area. Um, they noticed that family dynamics can become very difficult later on. So you have, you know, a daughter and a son and they're arguing about what, how, how, how to go about, maybe it's determining who's going to be guardian if it's at that point or, yeah. or uh, you know conservatorship you know things like that are they going to be put in a nursing home are they keeping them home whose home are they staying at so all of a sudden all these family dynamics come into play and they were kind of it, you know it was like oh okay this was something that they really uh, didn't expect but you know it makes sense given mm -hmm. the situation but that was that was what caused a lot of issues was the families and dealing with you know how do how do we we almost have to make peace with the family in order to move forward with the person yeah. with dementia okay. and that can become very difficult because you have to be very sensitive to families and what they're going through yeah. um, you know it's it's a very difficult time there's a ton of research that talks about the burden and the depression and the quality of life and 
and and everything that they feel um, or.